Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a reading roundup. In this video I want to share with you some of the books that I've been reading recently that are not connected to Jane Austen July. I have been reading a lot of Jane Austen and Jane Austen related books uh, because I am participating in this wonderful, wonderful event. And uh, But I have been reading other books as well. So this video will be uh, non-Jane Austen <laughs> related reading. And if I am not mistaken, I think this is my 20th reading roundup, which is really fun. So I'm going to start with a couple of books uh, that I read as advanced reader copies um, that I want to share with you. The first one I loved so much that I ordered the first in the series off of Amazon as well as the second because it was coming out like uh, right away. And so I have, I actually have a copy to show you. This is Death at the Dance by Verity Bright. Now this is a pseudonym for a husband and wife writing team, which is really fun. And these are historical mysteries set in England in the 1920s. And they are super fun. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it four stars. Sorry, I gave it five stars. I loved it so much. And so I am really excited to, uh, to go back and read the first in the series as well, A Very English Murder. So the one that I read, um, Death at the Dance, is the second Lady Eleanor Swift mystery. So just to give you a, a really brief synopsis here, at a masked ball hosted by the Fenwick Langhams, Lady Eleanor enters the study to find Lancelot, who is her, mm, her beau, let's say, uh, leaning over a body with a candlestick in his hand, Behind him, the safe is open and empty. And then like a minute later, the police burst through the door and arrest Lancelot for murder and theft. So it is quite the beginning uh, to, to the story. It, is, it was fantastic. So there's a few things that I want to highlight here. First of all, it was funny. It was so funny. I was actually laughing out loud kind of less than 10 pages into it. So I really love that it was a lighthearted mystery and one that I found just really funny, very, very entertaining. I loved the characters. Lady Eleanor is a great character. And in the first book where she's introduced, the one I haven't read yet, you find out that she is new to being a lady. She's not used to that level in society. And so therefore she doesn't necessarily behave the way uh, a lady should behave. Um, but I really like her. She's, um, she's kind and a little bit klutzy and I like the way she treats people. I just really like her a lot. And um, I especially like the character of Clifford. He is the butler and he is great. He is such a good character and the relationship between him and Lady Eleanor is just brilliant. I love it a lot. Um, it was a good mystery. I did not guess uh, who the killer was. There was great dialogue. I really liked the dialogue and a really good sense of time and place. So I can highly, highly recommend uh, Death at the Dance and probably the series. So I am really looking forward to going back now and reading the first in the series. Then the other um, arc that I read was called A Dangerous Language by Sulari Gentil, and I'll put a picture of it up here. Now, I was at a distinct disadvantage from the beginning because I have not read any of the others in this series, and this is the eighth in the series. So I was at a disadvantage that I did not understand the world or, um, or the characters and their relationships with each other. Um, but in the end, that didn't stop me from really enjoying this book because I, gave it, I still gave it four stars. This is also a historical mystery. It is set in Australia in 1934. And um, it's a Roland Sinclair mystery. And so he gets 
uh, called upon by a detective to identify a body, a woman has been found dead and they think that it's someone that Roland knows and it turns out not to be. So a lot of the story is about identifying this, this person. But then there's a lot else going, a lot of other things going on. Roland agrees to help fly in a Hungarian, Czechoslovakian speaker to come and speak um, about kind of the truth about what's going on in Germany with the Nazis and there are a lot of people that are trying to prevent that from happening. So there was an awful lot in this book about politics and about loyalty. And so if, if this book is accurate in its research and its history, then I learned a lot about politics in Australia in the 30s. There was, like, there was a lot of fears of communism, but there was also a lot of kind of like um, fascist uh, political groups as well and fascist ideology. So it was really interesting. Um, there was really good descriptions of cars and airplanes of the period interesting complex characters and so yeah I gave that one four stars and if I can find the others if my library maybe has them I would go back and read the earlier ones in in the series okay then I read Murder Knocks Twice by Susanna Calkins. This is also a historical mystery. Uh, and this is set in Chicago in the 1920s. So we are right in the height of prohibition here. Um, and this was just a really fun, a really fun historical mystery as well. The main character is Gina Ricci and she, uh, she and her father, are living uh, it's just her and her dad her mother died a long time ago and her dad has an illness that prevents him from working so it's kind of all on her shoulders and she gets a job as a cigarette girl um, at a notorious speakeasy called the third door and while there she um, she kind of comes upon a murder immediately after it's happened um, the photographer at the speakeasy he is stabbed and she gets there just before he dies and uh, so she gets involved in the mystery of what's going on with that the reason she gets the job at the speakeasy is because the girl who had it before her was also killed and so she's a little bit curious about that and I just really enjoyed it it was really fun uh, it had some great characters and I just really enjoyed being in that world of 1920s Prohibition era Chicago. It was really fun. I gave this one four stars. And then I read um, a cozy called Wine and Punishment by Sarah Fox. This is the first in her literary pub mystery. And this is what caught my attention um, because I kind of... I do read cozies, but it really depends if I like them or not. And um, what attracted me to this was the fact that she opens a literary co a literary pub. So it's it's kind of the classic format for a cozy, for an American cozy, is to have someone move back to their small town or move to a small town, open up a new business, and stuff happens. And so that's exactly what happens in this. She um, breaks up with her longtime boyfriend uh, because he's been gambling. She moves back, she moves to this small town and it is in New Hampshire, I think. She was, oh, she was in Boston. Anyway, um, and so she moves and she opens this, um, oh, Vermont. Uh, and she opens this literary pub and the way the pub is described it is fantastic so books line the wall she has literary themed cocktails she has rooms in the pub that are designed specifically based on authors like Agatha Christie and Mary Stewart and she uses those rooms for um, for book clubs so it's just really really fun and so the mystery in this one it takes place during an annual autumn festival and uh, 
things start happening, um, some vandalism starts happening and she starts to think that there's someone out there that doesn't want her to stick around. And then her ex-boyfriend shows up unexpectedly back in town and he gets murdered before she has a chance to talk to him. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was fine. It was good. I gave it three stars. It was an enjoyable, cozy mystery. Then I read The Girl from the Train by Irma Joubert. I gave this one four stars. This was a really interesting story. This is historical mystery. And also, this will count for my Around the World Challenge. Um, I'm going to count it for South Africa because the author is from South Africa and this book was translated into the English from Afrikaan, which um, is fascinating. So the book opens in the 40s in Poland during World War II and then it moves to South Africa and moves up into the 50s. So. In this book, we meet um, Gretel, who is on a train with her mother, her grandmother, and her sister. And this train is on its way to Auschwitz. We also meet Joseph, who is a Polish resistance fighter. And with a couple of other resistance fighters, they've been sent to um, blow up a bridge because a train will be coming that is full of Nazi officers. But what ends up happening is the timing is wrong and the bridge blows up, but the train coming across it is this train that's heading toward Auschwitz, which is horrific. It's terrible. Um, but Gretel and her sister get um, taken off the train. Their mother and grandmother kind of lower them from the train at one point when it had slowed down to go around a curve or something in order to help them escape. And Joseph ends up finding Gretel. And the story is about their relationship. There is a lot in here about um, nationality because she is Polish. Um, her father uh, is a soldier. Um, he, he's actually a not Nazi officer, but he had been killed, but her grandmother is Jewish and, um, and Joseph is, um, Polish and, um, also Catholic. So there's a lot in here about nationality and about religion. It's very interesting. And then she gets sent to South Africa um, with a program where orphans were sent um, and she gets adopted by a lovely family in South Africa and it's just about kind of family and uh, who we love and loyalty and religion and nationality and it was a really good story that I really enjoyed. And then finally I did a reread of Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I had this out, oh, I took this out of the library because I recently did my Around the World Reading Challenge video, and this was the book that I read for Great Britain, um, but then I kept it to do a reread because I do enjoy this story a lot. Now, I know a lot of you probably know this story, so I won't go into great detail, but I mean, I give it four stars. It is a really interesting story, and Eleanor Oliphant is such a fascinating character. She's so interesting, and it's so... It's so enjoyable to watch her kind of um, move from this very isolated, lonely person who is afraid to move on from their past and to see her grow and develop in this book into um, a character who is a little more um, well-rounded and to see what friendship and and love can do for people so yeah Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine is a great read so that's what I've been reading recently have you read any of these books uh, let's chat about that in the comment section down below I'd love to know what you thought about them do any of these books sound interesting to you I'd love to hear about that as well and I'll see you for another video soon bye